The most interesting questions in statistics come up not in one variable, but in a relationship between two variables. When we're looking for a relationship between two variables, we generally want to establish one as an explanatory variable and the other as a response. The explanatory variable helps us to predict values of the response variable. This may be it may be the case that the explanatory variable influences the response variable, in which case we would call it a causal relationship, and it may just be that the explanatory variable helps us to predict the response variable without actually influencing it. So we'll look at both of those kinds of relationships at another point in the course, but for now we just want to establish this language and how it is that from a description of a question or a study, we can identify an explanatory and a response variable. So in this example here, we're asked, are a person's tattoos a predictor of his or her views about legalization of marijuana? We're talking about tattoos predicting views of legalization. So our explanatory variable is tattoos. And our response variable would be views about legalization of marijuana. If we happen to remember the names of our variables, this one was called legalize, that's going to be the shortest way to answer this question. It's fine to also write out views about legalization of marijuana here. What we're really after is identifying the quantity that's measured, not necessarily knowing the exact variable name. In our next example, we're asked, can the number of work hours that a student puts in outside of school be predicted with any degree of accuracy by how far that student lives from campus? So this question is asked in the reverse order, where we're asking if the response variable can be predicted by the explanatory variable. So it's not the case that the explanatory variable always comes up first in the description. Uh, the variable we used for the number of work hours a student puts in outside of school is called work. Whoops, sorry, that goes under response. That's the point I just made, so work. And the variable that represents the miles from campus would be the variable miles. So this is, again, the shortest way of answering this question. Lastly, we have this example here where we're talking about parents being willing to purchase a computer for their kids. If parents have many children, they're perhaps less likely to want to purchase a computer for each child. And so it could be that there's a house computer somewhere, but that the children get used to using tablets, which are a bit cheaper. So uh, the question is, is a student with more siblings more likely to use a tablet as his or her main computer. What we're asking here is, does the number of siblings predict tablet use? So our explanatory variable is siblings. Our response variable is tablet, as these are the names of the variables that we use to uh, measure each of these quantities. Um, so let's take a look again at all three of these now. Our first example used tattoos and legalize as our explanatory and response variables. Tattoos is categorical. Legalize is categorical. So this is a categorical explanatory variable and a categorical response variable. Our second example was miles from campus, which is quantitative. and hours of work, which is also quantitative. Why we might be interested in this question, can the number of work hours a student puts in outside of school be predicted by how far that student lives from campus? It could be that students who have gotten very well established with a job choose their home location by where they work and then they just go to the nearest campus, whereas full-time students who are working fewer hours might choose to live near a campus, right? This might be the reason that we would ask a question like this.
in any case, we have a quantitative explanatory variable and a quantitative response variable. For this last example, we have number of siblings, which is quantitative, and use of a tablet as your main computer, yes or no, that would be categorical. So it's also possible to have a quantitative explanatory variable and a categorical response variable. The reverse of this is also true. A categorical explanatory variable is perhaps even more common and then a quantitative response variable. So any combination of variables is possible and we will get into how we would display data graphically in each of these cases and how we would analyze data also throughout the course. We'll wrap up this video with an example from the textbook, partly just to see an example other than the ones that we made up, and partly to make sure that we know how to find things in the textbook. So we're going to look at exercise 1.13, Spider Sex Play. This course is probably already getting more exciting than you knew. And we're going to find that by going into the online version of the textbook, which you all should have access to through Wiley Plus. So from Blackboard, if we scroll down a bit, you'll see a Wiley Plus link. If you click on that, then you can log into Wiley Plus. After you have logged in, your view might look a little bit different from mine, but I would click on this course. And be taken to a screen that has a few options. The one that I want is called Read, Study, and Practice. So here in the middle, right? Read, Study, and Practice. I click on this to access the textbook. And when I first come into it, I see that mostly everything has to do with Chapter 1. Uh, since other times you'll be coming here, you might want to access other chapters. Let's go ahead and find it from the drop-down menu instead, selecting first Chapter 1 and then section 1.1, the structure of data, it makes everything on the page reflect that section. So I'm going to choose this first option here under objective resources, reading content. I'm about to click on this top one, 1.1, the structure of data. That gets me into this section. So reading through this is a good idea to get a little bit more perspective on the subject. And if I scroll all the way down past the examples, then I get to the exercises for section 1.1. I'm going to keep scrolling until I get to 1.13, Spider Sex Play. So go ahead and read this description. Come up with what you think the explanatory and response variables are, and whether each of those is quantitative or categorical. And when you're done, you can click on this Worked Solution Here button and check your answer. Go ahead and pause the video now because I'm about to display it. In the Worked Solution, we see that there are two variables that are described in this exercise. There may have been more variables in the study. We don't really know. The explanatory variable is whether or not the spider engaged in this mock sex and the response variable is the time it takes to reach the point of real mating. So that means we have an explanatory categorical variable which is whether or not the spider engaged in mock sex. We have a quantitative response variable which is the length of time to reach the point of real mating.